Way to the Vulcan Deck Masters uh, playoffs day number two. It's, I'm joined by Brian Kibler, who is seemingly lost hero. So if you guys have found him, go ahead and and uh, message Kibler. He's a high reward. We'll offer. What, what are we offering? Uh, anything and everything. Yeah. Okay. If, literally if, literally if sure everything. Lost, I, I would. Yes. This would be a horrible, horrible thing. That's Thankfully, good. he just That's abandoned good. me because there, there's no more food in this room. Uh, he went <laughs> to search for somewhere. Uh, That's right. Some, to eat something so <laughs> loyalty goes as far as the stomach is uh, as much as we know but uh, either way while we're on the quest for that uh we have a few players on the quest for the grand finals we have trump versus surrender coming up here in semifinal number two the winner of this uh, gets a spot in the grand finals happening on july 17th and that'll be brought to you by noxious and kibler or oh, sorry noxious and crip excuse me i was gonna say uh, this news to me <laughs> the case confused me a little bit uh we, we have kip crip and noxious casting on the 17th so make sure to mark the calendars for the finals of the day. $50,000 prize pool here for the season. And we're going to see who is going to be guaranteed a big chunk of that right now between Trump and Surrender. Yeah, uh, I mean, these two guys you know, fought their way through the group stage and now uh, several single elimination matches. Uh, both of them pulling out some pretty exciting wins. Uh, we saw some real drama with both Trump's uh, match just now against Toyota as well as Surrender earlier when he took out Strife Crow uh, when the sort of back and forth top deck war of the uh, the Houndmaster into prep into Eviscerate to close out the game. So yeah. I'm excited to see this uh, this play out. Yeah, pretty awesome to see if that ends up being another five game series going down to the wire. We've had some one sided matches. We also had some pretty close matches. A lot has to do with you know, the fact that Toyota just seems to never die and, and give up. And then Surrender <laughs> just has like the most crazy nail biting games uh, at the very end where it just comes down to one draw uh, every single time. And I, I like that Surrender also brought Rogue because I know Rogue has been getting a lot of bad rap amongst the, <clears throat> the competitive scene. Uh, it's almost gotten to the levels of, you know, kind of like Priest, like you bring Rogue if you, if you don't like winning type, you know, descriptions and adjectives. So I, I like to see a Rogue player succeed too. It brings some warmth to my heart. Yeah, I mean, he's he's definitely played really well in the games we've seen so far too. Uh, you know, both with his rogue deck and as well with his uh, with his patron warrior deck. Uh, certainly spotting lines of play that uh, you know got, got him some some pretty big edges in the in the games that we've seen so far. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Trump probably just kind of resetting and re-racking his brain, but surrender. I wonder how much fatigue plays into a factor too, considering that it's. Well, it has to be 5 or 6 a.m. or somewhere around that spot for Surrender, considering that he's been up for a while. And now either he's really tired um, because he's been staying up forever or he's still kind of in the middle of falling back asleep because he's trying to wake up and, and you know, try to stay, maintain, his <clears throat> maintain his focus as best as possible. Yeah, I'm always really impressed by the play players who compete in these events that are at incredible off hours for them. Uh, you know, we've seen uh, you know, Tiddler, for instance, plays in many, uh, many events uh, in the West despite living in China and you know, consistently actually does quite well. So you know, I, w I wonder how many of these players really you know, completely upend their entire schedule and just become nocturnal to play in uh, you know, Hearthstone events during their early morning hours. Yeah, I, th I mean, that's, that's the dedication of the Asian region in general. You see players like Roger or um, you know Tiddler, all those guys in China just really staying up at very odd hours to play with us in the West. And that's because how dedicated they are to really making it as a competitive player. Um, you, it's, it's, you don't get these kinds of chances very often. The fact is, you know, and the, the reality is too, that, you know, the popular people will continue to get invited, not just the streamers, but also the high performers like Kalento and, and Strifeco, etc. Um, and when you get the chance, you have to make the most of it. So you can bet that these guys are coming out swinging, and that's why they want it probably more than anybody right now. Because for some people, it is one tournament, and then you, next week there's another one. But for some of these guys, it's make it or break it. I mean, look at look at uh, Orange, who you know did very well uh, in one of the uh, the Pinnacle events, but unfortunately got got hit by a DDoS and thought maybe oh his chance was uh, was, was was lost. Uh, then went on to win DreamHack, and you know now is on Team Archon and gets invites to all of these major events. So yeah, yeah. you know one one big finish can really uh, really totally change a a player's experience in the Hearthstone world. Yeah, that's a good yeah. point. It's a good point indeed. Uh, and I guess uh, that's a really good way to preview and get you guys excited for this match. Uh, in the meantime, we have a couple of seconds here before we go into it. We just want to remind you one more time to check out Squarespace. 
dot com slash deckmasters. That's a cool promotion going on. Ten percent off of your website, and that'll probably be the last time we can really mention it before we end the broadcast. So go ahead and check it out if you want to create your own cool website, whether it's Hearthstone related or personal. So yeah, it looks like we're we're into the first game, and uh, it looks like it is a patron warrior mirror match. I see the armor up on both sides, so uh, as the hero power. So Trump on the bottom of the screen, uh, both. Players bringing, uh, you know, Garrosh. That not, not a uh, no Magni's jump in here. I'm kind of disappointed, yep. but I definitely Magni has my favorite emotes in the game. I, he actually sounds like really sincere when he's apologizing. He's like, "Oh, I'm so sorry, friend." Everyone else sounds kind of sarcastic <laughs> or you know whatever else. But I, uh, you know, I believe in in, uh, in the dwarves. They are they are good people. Yeah, they have, they have big hearts, right? Small people, big hearts. That's kind of how yeah. it works. I agree completely. I think Magni is the the best emotes just for the sincerity of it. You know, the genuity of of his emotes. You know, when he when he thanks people, when he greets people, it feels very heart and warming. Um, not like Jaina. Jaina like Jaina Jaina sounds it. so sarcastic. You're right. Gul'dan is the worst. Well played. It's like. <laughs> You sound thank so sincere. You. I really believe that you, you mean Thank, that. thank, thank, thank you. You know, that kind of, I'm like, God, I just want to race through my monitor and punch my time. opponent. Yeah. <laughs> no. But Gul'dan's like really ridiculous in the lore, right? Like, isn't he like the most powerful character in, if you just isolate everybody's power levels? He, he like fuses with Ner'zhul or whatever, I think, something like that. I don't, I don't really remember yeah. all the details of it. Makes sense why uh, his hero powers is, is the best, too. It's, it's awesome. true. Yeah, he gets yeah. he gets to you know like the character in in the history of the world it was basically a cheater. So he basically just gets to cheat by pressing a button. Ha! Anyway, yeah, makes sense. <laughs> we're into this game. We see yeah. surrender. Oh, it looks like surrender's playing in some sort of internet cafe. By the way, I see someone else also playing Hearthstone behind him oh, over no. his shoulder. Oh, well, I don't think it's a cafe. I think it's a team house. Oh, it was a team house, kind. or maybe a practice house. Because yeah, I guess that PC looks more. Bongs like are much more crowded and smoky and dirty. <laughs> There's guess, no I way. I guess that's exactly. true. I guess I guess that's too organized and individual a setup to really be a, a, a right, land right. cafe type place. Yeah. <clears throat> but people are starting to pile in and play Hearthstone behind him, and looks like he he thinks maybe there's no death spite, but Trump chooses to op to armor up instead and take his time, save his coins so he can use death spite into coin Thorson or keep his options open for the following turns if he needs it. Yeah, I mean, right now the the uh, Berserker alone doesn't really represent a huge threat, and he can save his coin, use Despite to clear it next turn, uh, and that just keeps his you know keeps his options open, like you're saying. Uh, the the coin is actually quite valuable in this matchup. Uh, he doesn't have anything else really exciting to play on four after the death spite, other than another death spite, which is clearly not what you're really looking to do. Um, so I think that I think that. Uh, he's definitely looking to to play that Thurison on five if he has the opportunity. Is there like a case where you just don't armor up? Well, we saw uh, in in ESL actually. We saw the Rat uh, playing in a lot of a lot of uh, his games where he just did not armor up to enable Battle Rage, uh, which I thought was pretty interesting. And uh, you know, he is he is certainly a player who has uh, who has played a lot of uh, Grim Patron Warrior. Oh yeah. Even so, to the point where he declares himself as the best patron player in the world. That um, is that is what I have heard. <laughs> that is the meme. That is the meme. Yeah. So, in this case, it doesn't really matter as much because Trump took damage past 30 anyways, but always worth evaluating if you have Battle Rage in hand and you also want to start considering ways to draw cards if you want to benefit off of things like Emperor Thorson. No. And yeah, so here, I mean, Trump no longer has the ability to just clear with Death Spite, uh, which... You know, he was obviously what his plan was this turn. Uh, he could, if he wants to, just fire off that execute and still potentially just coin death spite and clear the uh, the ghoul, which will allow him to possibly clear another minion uh, the following turn and just sort of sweep up that cruel taskmaster in the death rattle. That seems pretty effective. And you want to get ahead of the unstable ghoul in case an acolyte comes out. You have oh, yeah. no mission vendor, you have battle rate, so you can climb up on the resource advantage pretty significantly. And now you're forcing your opponent to have something too. Yeah. yeah. Here, you know, your opponent is expending expended some resources to protect that berserker, and you're able to use your resources to keep that berserker from being able to really do much that's very effective. Uh, I we could see surrender play patron into inner rage here, 
which would make the, the death spike from Trump much less efficient because it's going to generate patrons if he does attack with it. Um, I wouldn't be surprised to see that play. Because right now, yeah, you see patron plus inner rage. Now Trump is in a little bit of an awkward spot because attacking with his death spite will give his opponent additional uh, additional patrons. Ooh, but oh, but slam, which is actually a oh, great man. draw. Slam it's here excellent. allows him to clear the five two, uh, and then attack with his his uh, with his death spites. And yeah, he can he can open it up with frothing, which is even better because he ends up making a big frothing here as well. Yeah, it should be plus five uh, plus four damage. I guess. All right. Well, there's one, then two, three. Yeah. It only hits. Yeah, it hits itself. So it's plus five. Yeah. Or no, plus four. Sorry. Oh right, right, right. Because the minion that dies. Beast, yeah. The, the grim patron died right away. So now. Oh boy. You see a look of of unhappiness on Surrender's face. Right. He's yeah, forced to use his slam to just. Uh, open this up here, and then plays out a ghoul. That ghoul could be bad. Yeah, I don't think he wants to play ghoul. If he plays ghoul and his opponent just plays patron and attacks into it, he could be in a horrible spot. Mm -hmm. It looks I like he wants to do anything. I mean, maybe he's doing nothing. Maybe he actually just wants to leave that uh, leave that frothing up. Right. That way he can take damage from Battle Rage and then have an opportunity to draw multiple cards. Yeah, and here, Trump just gets to attack and then play Emperor. And, uh, yeah, Surrender gets to possibly play his, you know, play something into Whirlwind and then Battle Rage, or just Battle Rage for not really much effect. I mean, now he can't actually even remove the, the Thorison, is the thing. I mean, he could theoretically play Warsong into Unstable Ghoul, but that doesn't really, you know, he still doesn't have the five damage. Yeah, there's really no way other than having Battle Rage hopefully draw World uh, Execute off of maybe the Whirlwind Battle Rage play. That seems to be the best course of action here in order to stabilize from it. Because Emperor Thorsten getting two sweeps of mana reduction, yeah, that's nuts. You're just going to fall way too far behind. You're also down the resource count too. Yeah, Battle Rage Jing getting two cards off of it. Does he find Execute? He does no. not. So this, this is a disaster for Surrender. Not only is he behind on board, but uh, his he's also behind an Emperor Thurus and he's getting oh. multiple uses. Ooh. Wow. Well, Warsong allows him to use the Grim Patron and set up a few things in the few, next few turns. Uh, he can choose to do it now. He can choose to draw cards so that way Emperor Thurus gets even more value. He can get a really nice battle rage for three cards and reduce all of those cards that he draws. Yeah, I mean, if he really wanted to, Trump could, you know, play Warsong, but I don't really want to expose his Warsong here. Yeah, I, I like the I Gnomish Inventor, Cruel Tasks, and Battle Rage, or even just like Gnomish Inventor, Battle Rage, it's fine. Like, I think drawing to see what you get, and then even setting up Death Spite, so that way you have a really yeah. powerful board the next turn is good. I think, I think just, you can play, I mean, Gnomish Inventor, well, Gnomish Inventor's not going to be damage itself, so... You're not necessarily setting up a better Battle Rage. I do like Gnomish Inventor Death Spite, and probably just mm -hmm. Battle Rage because you have the mana for it. Right. Um, and you're going to set up uh, a better Emperor. You know, you're going to get less cards than you might in a future turn off of the Battle Rage, but you're going to get them discounted because you have Tharsin in play right now. So it's, it's worth yeah, the exactly. uh, sacrifice. So now Trump with a whole bunch of discounted cards, and it's still nice. in a great position. Yeah, multiple. He discounts even. Gnomish into Acolyte. I'm actually a little surprised that we didn't, after that inner rage draw, that we didn't see a possible like War Song into uh, into Gnomish to potentially set up the inner rage to kill Emperor. Maybe he just needs to save the inner rage to combo off though. Yeah, I think he was hoping for a Death Bite or Fiery War Axe or something. You know, yeah. like he had four mana remaining. He, it was perfect for him to draw into a way to kill Emperor Thorson. And here, That's if he enrages, he can still draw Execute. Yeah. I think, the game, I think the game is very likely pretty much over if, uh, if this. I mean, the Emperor isn't even necessarily the biggest threat right now. It's actually just the fact that Trump's hand is insane at the moment. 
Yeah, it's too much damage. Um, 5, 9, 11, plus, let's say, 4 Grim Patrons maximum. It's 23. No, he wouldn't, he wouldn't die unless he has a Frothing Berserker. Oh, despite one card too late. Oh. An unstable ghoul. But still no frothing on Trump's side, so... I mean, is there a way, though? I mean, one of the things that you can't discount is that you can buff up the patron with the cool taskmaster, attack a cool master, and then sue it, kill it off with an unstable ghoul and multiply it. I, actually, I'm not sure, because then you leave... Like, this is the stuff where if you played it a lot, you can get the experience to do so. And then uh, you can almost, like, instantaneously count it within a few seconds. But I have to yeah, admit that this, this is, like, complicated for me. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's a, there's a lot going on here. And, I mean, a lot of it actually, the, you know, the sort of multiplication of patrons doesn't necessarily always work how you want because of the limitations you have on just space in the board. Right. Yeah, th this is what I was talking about. Being able to kill it off and then um, multiplying it. And then the, the trick is to see if you can kill off one more patron after you attack. But I don't think you can because you're limited on space. Looks like he is just short uh, by one, one damage. Job, we, yeah. We've actually seen this before. I mean, this is theoretically a board where Surrender could actually win the game if he has... Oh, yes. Frothing Berserker? Yeah, oh, if, he had, if he had Frothing, I think he would win. If he had Warsong into Frothing plus Unstable Ghoul, I think he actually just wins that game, which is crazy. That's so funny. Yeah, we, we saw so this uh, actually the other day uh, in the Archon Team League with Life Coach against, I believe, Tiddler, where Tiddler actually slightly miscalculated and uh, and roped when he actually had lethal, and then Life Coach yeah. just killed him. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, so it, it, it was it, it was just too slow, slow. Actually, he missed damage because the patient didn't attack. It, it was yeah, like I mean, he calculated correctly, just didn't have time. I mean, Life Coach has a, a close personal relationship with the rope, so he was able to, you know, get it to work to his advantage uh, in that particular <clears throat> case. But uh, Trump here now picks up his win. Uh, Surrender does not have the the comeback uh, berserker kill when Trump leads at one, and now Trump leads the match one game to zero. Yeah, that's true. Um, now here, uh, the patron's out of the way, which seemed to be a liability in previous series just because the patron was lining up really awkwardly and it felt targeted by some decks. People who brought Handlock was trying to see if they can uh, pressure the, the the patron warrior and then make sure that it got no wins in Conquest. Um, ironically, even though it's one of the strongest decks for Conquest, it feels like it can be targeted. In this scenario, Trump has the Warlock and the... Was it, was it the Hybrid Hunter, if I recall correctly? Yeah, he has, he has Handlock and Hybrid Hunter remaining. Okay. So, uh, and it looks like he is up against Surrender's Hunter deck, which, uh, as we know, is is pretty much straight face Hunter. So this is generally a matchup, as we've mentioned before, that tends to favor the player who has the more aggressive Hunter deck. So, in this case, uh, I, I think that Surrender is is likely to have a little bit of an edge, but uh, it's also true that, that I think that the player who goes first is generally also somewhat favored as well. So uh, Trump with a reasonable opening, uh, with Abusive into Creeper into, uh, or, or maybe a Mad Scientist uh, with the Animal Committee to follow up. Uh, but Surrender has one of the key cards here, which is the Haunted Creeper. So that coin Creeper gives him a way to contest the 2-1 Abusive Sergeant for value, uh, and then even has the, the, the juggler to follow up. Mm hmm. Now, Trump will be the one trying to seize the board back. Should he play his own mad science to get the secret out of the way? Because I know a lot of times mad scientists get less value as the game goes on, potentially by drawing the secrets. But Haunted Creeper is the more board resilient play, too. So, so you know, that, yeah, there's yeah. that trade off, too. It looks like he goes with the creeper of his own. I like creeper with the uh, with the glaive zuka in hand. Creeper's uh, you know a, a nice minion that you can potentially buff up with that uh, that punishes your opponent for killing it. Oh yeah. Oh, and then the oh. shots go. All right, so that's that's okay. Um, It's actually, I think, pretty perfect because he didn't actually want Trump to have uh, the two minions to be able to easily contest the mm -hmm. uh, the knife juggler. So here, I mean, Trump can't really efficiently 
use his mana. He'd love to be able to cast Animal Companion and then next turn play two two cost spells, but I think Glaive Zuka here is probably his best option. Yeah. It's it's his most consistent and mm -hmm. he takes the least amount of damage this way and board control. Mm -hmm. There's no way he can just straight up YOLO with Knife Juggler because I think uh, there's there's just too much variance involved in that. Oh yeah. So here we see Surrender. Animal Companion seems pretty good this turn. Yeah. If he's I mean, Misha, he can protect it very well. Yeah, there's there's no outcomes that are bad. Um, I mean, Leoc is not super exciting. And it's Le we've seen so many Leocs today. Well, I mean, it's Leoc's the least good, if we can describe Most it that the, way. In the in the correct situation, Leoc is is totally bonkers. But here, yeah, it is definitely not uh, not what you're looking for. Uh, and Surrender, I think, debating whether he wants to go face or uh, clear off a guy. I think, given that you know he has an arcane golem in his hand, I like going face. Yeah, makes and now more sense. Trump kind of has to decide how he wants to play this turn. Uh, he probably wants to get rid of Leoc, uh, and I, I kind of like playing uh, playing juggler into Mad Scientist to set yourself up. Oh no, okay. If you play Juggler and Imagine yeah. Scientist, you can set yourself up to possibly uh, have the best chance of, of hitting a guy and clearing. Mm -hmm. I guess that is actually particularly vulnerable to Explosive Trap, which Trump knows that Surrender does have, though. Not in his hand, but in his deck. Yes. I also think Shredder is really hard to play in the following turns because you're, you're going to be losing a lot of health and it won't have immediate impact versus Animal Companion, Knife Juggler, Mad Scientist all potentially could have pretty big impact. That's true. It's, it's also like fitting a four mana spell into your curve later on is much harder than fitting two and three mana spells. So yes. uh, yeah, no, it's, I, I definitely, I definitely sort of changed my mind. I like the shredder there. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Morgan Infiltrator and Wolf Rider is the most power onto the board. Allows him to charge immediately. Um, don't know how comfortable I am doing Arcane Golem until it's like the finishing points of damage, like setting up for lethal. And I'd be surprised if he chose to go for Worgen Infiltrator and then chose the hero power all of a sudden. Um, okay. Haunted Creeper is more resilient, but I still think Wolf Rider is like just the best because it forces Patcher into an awkward spot where it has to trade down, mm -hmm. if at all. And the opponent needs to have specifically unleashed to house the punish list. So you've got to be really, really afraid of Juggle Unleash if you're if you uh, you do play another one health minion there. But by doing this, he gives some chance for um, for Trump to take the board if he gets a really good like animal companion roll, like a Misha, and it kills his Worgen infiltrator. That, I mean, yeah, that would be huge. Well, it's tougher. Oh, oh my ooh, gosh! The best hit. So, ooh, and you see oh surrender. man, surrender's well, devastated. Was not happy about how that went. I mean, that was the worst possible scenario for him. And yeah, he's. It looks like uh, he's going to. Set up his explosive trap, and this is actually one of the one of the cards that is really powerful in the hunter mirror matches because you know, when you do get a board advantage, uh, it can be difficult to take advantage of it if your opponent has explosive trap because many of the minions are are, are small and uh, as such end up dying to the explosive. Yeah, but there are conveniently three minions placed here, which allow him to trade it off. Would he contemplate? Hmm. I guess right is, now I was wondering if. Off. Yeah. No, go ahead. No, 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 go finish your thought. Go ahead. I was gonna say if he, if he trades off, then he uh, unfortunately can't actually play more minions this turn because he's not actually triggering the trap, and all of the minions he has die to trap. Which coincidentally works out okay if his opponent, since his opponent doesn't have a weapon and he has a second trap, right? It would actually be reasonable. But um, in this scenario, because his opponent has a second trap, that, it works out somewhat okay. And it even gets to uh, set up for another explosive trap, too. He saw yeah, setting up is, the next number. This is a little awkward for, for Trump because now, yeah, the explosive trap plus attack into your guy, hero power you. Now Trump is in a position where I assume he's going to attack into the mech warper. Yeah, I'd be really surprised if he did, didn't... Considering that his opponent knows what type of hunter this is, and he's got two explosives. Right. 
if he sends a charger, he's saying that he wants to kill him next turn. And giving a charger allows him to get more value off of what's on the board. So yeah. if he plays Arcane Golem now, he can just push a minion into Arcane Golem. Mm -hmm. And then... You're not, not, you're not gaining much damage compared to just hero powering. Like, if he had five mana, I could understand playing a minion, playing a charge minion and attacking. But I don't think he's setting up for two-turn lethal here. He could attack him down to 14, and the next turn he, is, he doesn't have 14 damage. He has... Well, he needs to do 12 because his opponent's going to attack into the explosive trap. So he what? needs to do 12 damage. That's true. Alright, okay. so he's the 15. Sludge Pelcher is so Ooh. nasty in this position. That is a big, big pickup for Trump. That not only uh, is you know just a sizable minion, but also prevents that charge damage coming in from Arcane Golem pretty handily. Yeah. And, and yeah, you know, I expect we're gonna see next attack. And I mean, I, now surrender did you know he, he did get a little bit of tr uh, a little bit extra damage, one more damage than just hero powering there. Um, thanks to uh, thanks to playing the wolf rider. But Trump is still now at thirteen health, and surrender looks to the looks to the sky as he's yeah. Oh no, oh he really wants an owl right here. Oh man, oh, here that he is. I mean, even if it was an owl, there's two layers of defense. There's another trap. There's a freezing trap and a taunt. It's like there's no charger getting to the face this turn. Yeah. Oh, oh man. Let's well, tingle him to, to at least break the trap. That's his plan. Here. Yeah. He wants to get the trap out of the way, so in a future turn, he's able to uh, uh, he's able to deal with it. Yeah. Still here. You know, the game is also late enough where it's not as high impact to give a mana crystal as, you know, he has one card remaining. The only way he could truly backfire is if it was some way for a quick shot to draw into another game ending damage. And the, Trump is the one who picks up an owl, which is pretty awkward because he actually can't <laughs> play it because he would silence his sledge culture. Yeah. He would love to potentially play what he drew and, and uh, maybe fire off a quick shot to dig a little deeper into his deck, but that is not a card he can play here. Mad so scientists, funny. not really going to cut no. it. I don't think Surrender has any traps left in his deck either. So, let's see. What's the best case in the next draw that he could win the game? Because he can hero power down to nine, and if he can kill command for seven next turn, he needs to draw two more damage. But the problem is he can't do that in two cards. He he doesn't, he draw, yeah, he doesn't, he doesn't have a beast in, in, in play either, or in his hand. Exactly. So it needs to draw a beast that could do two damage to the face. Hmm. Or he kills this sludge belcher with both chargers. <laughs> uh, which also is equally terrible. Yeah, that's not a, not a very appealing play. So now if he draws if he draws owl. Oh yeah, if he draws owl. That allows him to owl charger plus kill command. Yeah. I mean, owl, owl is basically the card that he's looking for the most here. I don't know what it, what the, his sort of owl situation is, but we haven't. I don't recall actually seeing an owl out of his deck. Now that I'm sort of thinking of the previous games we've seen him play. Oh, hey oh, That's that is game. Yep. The the classic sludge belcher wolf rider deck. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. The unholy matrimony. Two the great cases to taste great together right here. <laughs> <laughs> Start of a great comedy series on NBC. Yeah, exactly. Well, the Odd Couple. Sludge Belgium. Uh, so yeah, well, Trump takes a quick 2-0 lead, and that was a matchup we thought where he might struggle. The yeah. uh, the Hybrid Hunter deck uh, managing to pull it out in large part thanks to the Sludge Belcher that uh, really kept him alive against the charge damage that Surrender was threatening. Yeah, for sure. I mean, that Sludge Belcher was really big. The Freezing Trap was also really big, too. But just look at that complication. Uh, Surrender had damage to end the game, just not not able to hit the face, you know? The people kind of made jokes about that, and they, they put a bunch of face phrases like... taunt. Yeah, or like, you know, taunt is cheat, you know, that kind of stuff. But the, the point is, that's what happens when you disrupt a little bit, and you still can be really aggressive at the same time. That was Hybrid Hunter at its best and we've also seen it at its worst 
In this scenario, Trump doesn't have to worry about it anymore. He's up 2-0, and he has three tries with the zoo, which can definitely take games off of any deck based off its nat natural curve and the huge tempo plays with things like yeah. Void Callers and Void Terrors. And I mean, zoo, this is more of a, a sort of mid-range-ish style zoo rather than an all-in aggressive style of zoo that we used to see uh, before cards like Void Caller or Imp Gang Boss, uh, which makes it a lot more resilient to explosive tra trap in particular which has traditionally been a card that can be uh, a lot of uh, can give, give a lot of trouble to the, the smaller zoo decks. Yes, absolutely. Of course, you have to draw those cards in order to be beneficial off of Void Caller. I just wonder if Trump wants to throw Void Caller away ever because it's just it's so strong, and you know your opponent won't have things like Freezing Trap to deny the Void Caller, but you don't have the guarantee of having a good demon either, and I think you want to value your early curve. It's, it's, it's a hard... You know, delicate balance with your mulligans, which are one of the most important phases to a game that's so fast-paced. Oh yeah, for sure. And here we have the the very sad flame imp when your opponent has played a uh, a leper gnome, which is just probably the worst feeling. You know, you're, <laughs> you're, you've already, you're you're dealing yeah. three to yourself, and your opponent, you know, can even just trade in and do another two to you if they really want to. Oh yeah, it's really painful. And uh, they're. Trump already at 25 on just turn two, uh, but Imp Gang Boss is a big a big pickup for Trump here. If he uh, if he wants to go coin Imp Gang, that makes it pretty tough for most of what Surrender can possibly uh, possibly put out there to actually contest his ability to uh, mm -hmm. have pretty big threats on the board. It's also a card that's really really powerful to follow up with Juggler, but it looks like Trump just goes with Juggler himself. This, this gives uh, Surrender the ability to clear the board with his bow if he wants to, or, or even just with Glaive Zuka, and just keep pushing damage to face. I'm a little surprised to see Trump play the weaker minion there and keep his coin, uh, just because it, it's so vulnerable to a number of different potential removal uh, effects that uh, Surrender is able to, able to leverage to just keep his knife juggler in play. And we see the bow come down. Or at least hover as if it's about to come down. Looks like Surrender is taking his time with this decision. And, and yep, Bo takes out the juggler, and Surrender just keeps pushing for face damage. So, ooh, implosion. That is a, also a potentially big draw from Trump. And I think we're just going to see coin implosion here. It's just such a strong play. Uh, anything but a. Uh, Unleash the Hounds, and we have ooh, ooh, Trump is an esports champion, four point implosion, and that's pretty strong, particularly with the Defender Vargas in his hand, because Defender Vargas can represent uh, not only the ability for for Trump to defend himself, but also just a lot of uh, a, a lot of ability to push for damage here. Speaking of pushing for damage, here is Huffer, always mm -hmm. Huffer. Is it is it ever never not Huffer? I mean, excusing all the Leox we saw today, is it ever not Huffer? I think no. I think it's it's been not Huffer once in, in history, <laughs> yeah. at least. Alright, we see so, so Voidwalker. Yeah. <laughs> Voidwalker come down with Imp Gang Boss. And uh, ne this this is threatening a really, really strong turn from Trump next turn because uh, Defender of Argus on Imp Gang Boss can be just be an absolute nightmare. Not only is it a five health taunt that you need to push through, but every time you you, you actually damage it, uh, the uh, the warlock is getting an additional minion. Right to trade into your Wolf Riders or whatever minions come out. Mm -hmm. And now here, I mean, this this is actually also a really awkward spot for Surrender because Wolf Rider can't really attack it effectively into the Voidwalker. It just trades three drop for one drop. It looks like it might be what he's doing though. Yeah, I think he feels like he's confident with the amount of burn he has. Um, yeah. He's got two kill commands, and if he can maximize their value, that's 10 damage, and the Glaive Zuka should carry you all the way home. Um, that's optimistic, to say the least, but the point is you're, you're putting your opponent on a pretty f aggressive clock here to end the game. Yeah, so it looks like... Uh, he's, I think he's debating Glaive Zuka or Hero Power here. He yeah, is... Uh, no. We know that the Glaive Zuka is a better play because the yeah. Defender of Argus coming in here. All right, so, and this Defender of Argus is going to be pretty huge here. Doomguard helps him race in the next couple of turns, yeah, which is really it's big. Also, a big as well. 
So, looks like Trump is up to, ooh, mad scientist, not really what he's looking for, and uh, that hero power, or that, that uh, weapon is not really able to push through any damage here. He can take out one of the taunts, um, but not the big one. And this is another situation where Surrender is facing a 3-5 taunt and would love to draw Iron Beak out. <laughs> or some way to disarm it so it's easy to, to deal with. Um, this seems to be a theme of this match. 3-5 mm -hmm. taunt versus no Iron Beak Owl from the face hunter. Alright, now would and you silence this to prevent the explosive trap which you know inevitably will come out or do you, would you just go doom guard here and just pressure as much as I you mean, can if we look at if we look at the, the the board state what trump has five six he can attack for 11 this turn put surrender to five i mean that that means doom guard alone is lethal next turn and he put he put him to yeah. six this turn which means it, doom guard would be one off 10, 11. No, it's, oh it's six you're right you're right right right, 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 right. sorry i Miscount a little bit, but I still like that math. Of I, I like it too. I mean, and this I, is a position where well, there's an explosive oh, trap, which is probably oh the worst draw when you already have a bad yeah, scientist who uh, gets explosive oh trap. Gosh. Okay, so now he's like wondering if there's a way for him to survive. I mean, he, ha he has to, in order to survive, he has to kill command both the imp gang boss <laughs> and the, uh, the defender of Argus. Because either one of them hitting him kills him, along with the Doom Guard. He can also just double double uh, kill command the Doom Guard, right? Which means that he could, he will get attacked for five, and his opponent gets another imp, which is pro that's probably better because then he can, his explosive trap is is actually still uh, live in his hand. Yeah, next yeah I like turn. by 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 I like double kill command the Doom Guard. I mean, it is the better miserable play he has the opportunity of this turn, opportunity to make this turn. Yeah, it, it will also the really bad icing on the cake is he can't hero power. Because if yeah, so, this freezing, this explosive trap would have put him down to seven, and then he would be able to get another combination and put his opponent that much quicker off the kill. And this is the, <laughs> sad, the saddest wow. of double kill command turn. Any buff? Does Trump dare tap? There's there's no way you life tap here. You just play your minions. Yeah, you just you just go. attack, play minion, minion. Yeah, your your opponent goes down to one already. Do you even play minions? Actually, is it even is it even better to to, to play these than to just say go? Well, like, we know I, that I, void caller is. Leech. He already used kill commands though, so unleash it's plus true. unleash plus knife juggler is the most. No, unleash plus like arcane golem. No, unleash plus Leroy is the highest amount of damage you can do. That yes, and he would kill you if that's the case. Uh, but it, is, is it different whether you play your minions or not? The unleashes. No, it wouldn't matter because you have three. And Leroy's. No. The unleashes for three and Leroy's. No, no, no. Yeah, you're you're dead either way because because yeah. uh, he would unleash for five after the Leroy, so or whatever. So it doesn't matter against unleash Leroy, but doesn't matter against like unleash quick shot. Uh, three, six. No, you'd be one damage off. No. Yeah, so <laughs> That's like well it's just a comedy of errors and draws. Like I, just I think, I think just from Trump's perspective, I, I do think the Voidwalker is just the correct play, or the Void Caller is the correct play because he does need to have something that can attack and live if his opponent plays explosive. So he needs to play at least a three uh, health minion in order to be there. And uh, he he finds the play, which would have, if he hadn't played anything, would have gotten punished by the second explosive trap. And uh, Trump advances three games to zero. Yeah, and that's yet another finals appearance for Trump, who's just been tearing it up lately. Uh, all of his tournament results in the past couple of months have been very good, and I think he's always been on the verge of... It kind of became a joke where Trump was like top four all the time, but never really a tournament threat. And he recently picked up a nice online win, and he's in the finals yet again. And this is a big tournament, 50K. Uh, I mean, Trump might realistically start shooting up all the rankings that people have to be one of the best players in North America, if not already. Yeah, no, I mean, he's definitely had a really strong string of finishes. Uh, you know, I've had uh, a great time working with him for the Archon Team League. You know, we're both on Team Value Town along with Dog, and uh, he's is. certainly a very solid player who has, uh, you know, been on the cusp of having great tournament success and now is finally finding it.
Yeah, absolutely. Um, and that is going to be it for today. We have two more matches remaining in Vulcan Deck Masters Season 1. It is the third and fourth place match. Uh, and that's also going to be joined by the Grand Finals happening on July 17th with Noxious and Crip here on the channel of Vulcan HS. We're done for today. Uh, Gibbler, do you have any final words, thoughts, sign-offs, maybe about the league itself or uh, about your time here today? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's. I had a great time both casting the Deckmasters League as well as playing in it. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. unfortunately, I didn't it didn't quite make it this far, so I'm talking about the games rather than playing them. But I uh, definitely enjoyed both those experiences. And uh, you know, thanks to uh, Vulcan for having me, as well as uh, Squarespace for, for sponsoring the event. Absolutely, Squarespace.com/slash/Deckmasters. Get ten percent off of your website creation. It's pretty easy to make a website again. Uh, you don't really need a lot of experience or technical know-how in order to create something cool for yourself. And they're, they're a sponsor of the event. You can go ahead and show your thanks. Do that uh, either through the link or on the Twitch profile below. Uh, that's it for today. Thank you so much for everybody who tuned in and watched. Uh, we'll see you guys for the Grand Finals again, July 17th. We'll see you guys then. Have a good night.